a sequence that perhaps epitomized the narrative of the fight. In the illustrious world of boxing, few encounters have garnered the kind of anticipation and excitement as the unforgettable showdown between Roy Jones Jr. and James Tony, which took place on November 18, 1994. The face-off, evocatively billed as the Uncivil War, was more than a fight. It was a spectacle of skill, determination, and rivalry, showcasing two of boxing's eminent figures at the pinnacle of their careers, each with a storied legacy in the making. This is the story of Roy Jones Jr. versus James Tony. Before they etched their names in the annals of boxing history, Roy Jones Jr. and James Lights Out Tony were fighters voraciously hungry for greatness, each with a narrative steeped in hard work, resilience, and an undying quest for victory. Their paths to pugilistic excellence, though distinctive, were emblematic of their indomitable spirits and unyielding ambition. Roy Jones Jr., often regarded as a prodigy in the boxing realm, was a virtuoso whose skills in the ring were akin to a maestro composing a symphony. His boxing journey began in the picturesque city of Pensacola, Florida, where he was born into a family with a rich boxing pedigree. His father, Roy Jones Sr., was a former boxer himself and would serve as the initial catalyst, instilling in young Roy the fundamentals that would eventually blossom into a style that was both flamboyant and effective. Jones Jr.'s speed, reminiscent of a lightweight, fused with the ferocious power typical of a heavyweight, made him a marvel to behold in the ring. As his career progressed, he amassed an impressive array of titles and accolades, including the IBF middleweight title in 1993, a precursor to his ambition for super middleweight glory. His technique, often described as unorthodox yet breathtaking, coupled with his incredible athleticism, had already placed him on a trajectory towards becoming one of boxing's greats. On the other side was James Lights Out Tony, a quintessential warrior bred in the harsh environs of Ann Arbor, Michigan. His moniker, Lights Out, was a testament to his ability to decisively end fights, a reputation that followed him as his career burgeoned. Tony was as tough as they came, a stoic figure in the ring who could outbox or outfight his adversaries, depending on what the night demanded. I can, I can go to any style. I can fight you. I can box you if you want to box. And I can outbox you. I got slug with you. And I can outslug you. I can do it to complete fighter. His upbringing, a narrative filled with challenges, served as the crucible that forged his indomitable spirit and unyielding tenacity. Before the iconic encounter with Jones Jr., Tony had already showcased his mettle by clinching titles in multiple weight classes, including the IBF middleweight and super middleweight titles. His technical prowess and granite chin made him a formidable opponent, feared by many in the boxing fraternity. As their careers soared, a collision course seemed inevitable, a narrative that was only intensified by their contrasting styles and personalities. The boxing community yearned for a showdown, a clash of titans that would not only satisfy the competitive rivalry between the two, but also present a clear narrative of boxing's evolving dynamics. The accomplishments both men had garnered before their fateful meeting in the ring were indicative of their exemplary skills and the remarkable journeys they had traversed in the unforgiving world of boxing. Their contrasting upbringings, the adversities they overcame, and their relentless pursuit of greatness were the subplots that enriched the story of what would become one of the most talked about encounters in boxing history. It was a bout that promised to etch its narrative in the golden pages of boxing law, a contest of wills between two men who embodied the essence of the sweet science. The pathway to the legendary encounter between Roy Jones Jr. and James Tony was laden with anticipation and fervor, as the boxing world keenly watched the ascension of two of its brightest stars on a collision course. Jones had been dominating the IBF middleweight division since clinching the title from Bernard Hopkins on May 22, 1993, and had defended the middleweight belt only once before making the bold decision to vacate the title to move up to the super middleweight division. His rise had been as dazzling as his in-ring performances, with an unblemished record that only heightened the excitement surrounding his venture into new terrains. On the other side, Tony, 
the reigning IBF super middleweight champion since his victory over Iran Barkley in 1993, had successfully defended his title three times. Each victory Tony secured further bolstered his reputation as a fearsome warrior, making him a formidable force in the super middleweight division. The stage was set for a monumental showdown between these two boxing phenoms, a natural spectacle that required no embellishment. Yet the anticipation surrounding this clash of titans crackled through the boxing community like a gathering storm, with every jab and hook thrown in the run-up to the encounter, only adding fuel to the electric atmosphere that had engulfed the sport. As the fight loomed on the horizon, the trash talk between the two fighters began to simmer, adding a spicy narrative to an already tantalizing matchup. Exactly what is it you dislike about Roy? Well, like I said, he's coming up, he's stepping up to challenge me. Anybody challenge me, guys get dogged out. That's my job. You know, I'm not going to say that somebody challenge me, going to say, oh, he's a nice guy and all that. I'm not going to do that. A Any man challenges me, he's going to get dogged out. What about you, Roy? Anybody who come into the ring against you got to get dogged out too? Nah, you don't got to get dogged out. You just got to get taught a lesson. Tony, known for his brash demeanor and sharp tongue, had choice words for Jones, often downplaying Jones's abilities and vowing to expose him when they met in the ring. Jones, on the other hand, was more reserved in his words, but exuded a quiet confidence that was unnerving. His performances in previous fights spoke volumes, and he was content to let his fists do the talking come fight night. As the titanic encounter between Roy Jones Jr. and James Tony neared, both men delved into a rigorous regimen of training, each aware of the magnitude this duel held for their careers. This wasn't just a fight, it was a crucible that would test their mettle and potentially redefine their legacies. The echoes of their gloves hitting the bags, the relentless skipping of ropes, and the sweat-soaked hours in the gym were a testament to their unwavering commitment to emerging victorious from the battle that awaited. Roy Jones Jr., whose meteoric rise had been a blend of natural talent and unyielding work ethic, approached his training with a voracious appetite for perfection. Every jab, every hook, every evasion was a melody in a symphony he was composing for fight night. His training sessions were a spectacle of speed, power, and finesse, a manifestation of his intent to ascend to a new pinnacle in his already illustrious career. He dissected his own style, refining his strengths and fortifying his weaknesses, all with the singular aim of standing tall when the dust settled in the ring against Tony. Across the divide, James Tony's preparation was no less intense. His was a gritty, no-nonsense approach to training, each day a step towards honing the warrior that resided within. Tony's regimen was a grind, a brutal dance of endurance and strength training intertwined with technical refinement. His days were long, the nights short, the echoes of his determination reverberating through the halls of his training facility. Each punch he threw in training was a message, a promise of the storm that was brewing for the showdown. The fight represented a juncture in their careers, a point from which there could be a soaring ascent or a crushing descent. For Jones, victory would be a validation of his claim as one of boxing's premier talents, a chance to etch his name alongside the legends of the sport. For Tonet, it was about defending his turf, proving that his reign in the super middleweight division was far from over, and that he was indeed the embodiment of boxing excellence. Both men were forging their armor, sharpening their swords for a battle that was as much about personal vindication as it was about professional glory. The world watched with bated breath as two of boxing's finest craftsmen prepared to showcase a lifetime of preparation, skill, and heart in a duel that would be remembered through the ages. Each bead of sweat, every grueling hour of training, was a step towards the fated night that held the promise of immortality for the victor. On November 18, 1994, the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas transformed into a modern-day coliseum, with boxing aficionados from around the globe congregating to witness a contest that promised to be etched in pugilistic folklore. The atmosphere was electric, an amalgamation of anticipation and the raw energy of two combatants ready to lay it all in the ring. The roaring crowd bore witness as the two eminent figures of boxing 
Roy Jones Jr. and James Tony made their entrances amidst a cacophony of cheers and music that reverberated through the arena, each step towards the ring, amplifying the magnitude of the encounter that awaited. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! As the bell chimed, heralding the start of a bout dubbed the Uncivil War, the contrasting styles of both men were on full display. Jones, with his blinding speed and elusive movement, juxtaposed against Tony's ironclad technique and tactical acumen. It was a masterclass of boxing prowess, a ballet of ferocious strikes and evasive maneuvers that kept the onlookers on the edge of their seats. The fight unfolded as a narrative of Jones' dominance, his speed proving to be a riddle that Tony found hard to solve. Though Tony was the slight favorite entering the fight, he struggled to acclimate to the required weight, which perhaps hindered his performance, making him appear sluggish throughout the match. In contrast, Jones seemed to be in his element, dictating the pace and rhythm of the fight with an almost poetic fluidity. As the rounds progressed, the highlight of the third round showcased a moment of taunting from Jones, which was a testament to his confidence and control in the bout. Tony, not to be outdone, attempted to reciprocate, but found himself caught by Jones's swift retaliation, a sequence that perhaps epitomized the narrative of the fight. The exchanges between the two fighters were a blend of technical prowess and raw power. Jones utilized a combination of jabs, hooks, and uppercuts, delivered with a speed that seemed to defy physics, each strike a statement of his intent. On the other hand, Tony, with his methodical approach, tried to break down Jones's defenses, employing a mix of body shots and counterpunches, each thrown with a precision honed through years of grueling training. As the fight ventured into the later rounds, from 8 to 12, Jones seemed to have found his rhythm and range, his extraordinary athleticism shining through. With lightning-fast shots, he picked Tony apart, each jab and cross showcasing his superior speed and precision. His agility allowed him to dance around Tony's offense, rendering it ineffective as Tony struggled to connect. Each round further exemplified Jones's command over the bout, his ability to land devastating combinations while effortlessly evading Tony's attempts to retaliate. The spectacle was a portrayal of Jones' boxing acumen, a blend of speed, power, and tactical ingenuity that left an indelible mark on the canvas. As the final bell rang, culminating 12 rounds of relentless action, it was Jones whose hand was raised in victory, the unanimous decision by the judges reflecting his control over the match with scores of 119-108, 118-109, and 117-110. The win was a manifestation of Jones's ascendancy in the boxing hierarchy, a moment where his status transitioned from a phenom to a legend. Meanwhile, for Tony, it was a night of reflection, a step back perhaps, but not the end as he would continue to be a force in the boxing world. The aftermath of the fight heralded Roy Jones Jr. as a dominant force in the boxing realm, enhancing his stature and paving the way for a successful career that spanned multiple weight divisions. On the other hand, while the loss was a setback for James Tony, he managed to rejuvenate his career, moving up in weight classes and achieving success, particularly in the cruiserweight and heavyweight divisions. The fight also highlighted a shift in the super middleweight division showcasing the emergence of new talents and the ever-evolving competitive landscape of boxing. That captivating night of November 18, 1994, stands as a testament to a golden era in boxing, where the creme de la creme fearlessly locked horns to create legacies that would reverberate through time. It was a period where the ethos of the sport was characterized by an unyielding desire to prove one's mettle against the very best, crafting narratives that transcended beyond the ring becoming folklore for generations to admire. As the roars from the crowd resonated through the hallowed halls of the MGM Grand Garden Arena, history was being penned with each jab, each hook, and each evasive maneuver. The tale of Roy Jones Jr. and James Tony is but a chapter in the rich tapestry of boxing, a narrative that encapsulated the essence of competition 
and the pursuit of glory. Though they traversed divergent paths post the encounter, history shall always tether Roy Jones Jr. and James Tony to that fateful night, a night where they etched their names in golden letters, providing a narrative that will continue to inspire, enthrall, and exemplify the pinnacle of pugilistic endeavor. Through the sands of time, the legacy of this duel will continue to be a beacon of what the heart of a warrior can manifest in the ring. This is Roy Jones Jr. vs. James Tony. This is boxing.